Okay, I am going to try to get through what I wanted to say without crying. Um, first of all, thank you so much. First of all, thank you so much for coming out today in the cold and in the rain on a Friday afternoon when there's a million other things I know all of you that are doing. Um, I wanted to just give you a little bit of my uh, family history and background to tie into what I wanted to say today. My father uh, came to America in 1965 after Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965. He was recruited for work and he came to get his master's at the same time at Columbia University. And he's number three of ten children. And my grandmother assumed that once he was done with his master's, he would be heading back home. He eventually got married to a woman who had five siblings. And my grandmother hoped, if no other reason, he'll eventually come back because my mother would convince him that she wants to go back to Pakistan to be with her siblings and her parents. Eventually, my father sponsored eight members of his family, eight out of ten, who are now scattered over Texas and Florida and New York. My mother's five siblings all ended up coming as well. And my grandmother used to say, what is it that's in the water of the United States <laughs> that all of my children keep leaving the country they were born in? And my father came in 1965. My grandmother died in 2006. And she consistently asked him, when are you coming home? Oh, go on. Even after he had four children who went on to get married and raise their own children in the United States of America, she kept asking, when are you coming home? One day I asked her, I used to call her Zabi, I said, Zabi, why do you ask me what my husband's name is? This is where my mother's born in the city. You would think she would get the hint at some point. <laughs> and she told me, that will never be your home. One day they'll pick you up. Oh. And your home is where the people of your religious community are. And right now things are good, but one day we'll go back. And you need to have ties to your mother because one day you'll get it. I never believed her. She died in her 90s. She looked through a lot. She looked through the idea of class on partition. She saw a number of tragedies in her own personal life. But I just thought these were the thoughts of a, of a woman who's got very different life than mine. She doesn't understand what life is like in America. I won't lie. These past few months have been very frightening. And I've been thinking about the news headlines. You know, we have no idea what's coming down the pipeline. I think it's fair and say that let there be no terrorism acts in the world. Let there be no nefarious executive orders being signed. Let there be no hatred. But we know life is made up of ups and downs, and we have no idea what's coming around tomorrow. So I'm grateful for this ring around the Islamic Center because I want you to know you haven't formed the ring just around the Islamic Center, you've formed the ring around our hearts. And when our children are scared, and when they're questioning about what's going to happen, we can remember this day and just remind them. Remember all those people that came out to show their love and their support? There's so many more like them. Followers of Jesus, followers of Moses, Followers of Muhammad, for all cousins, all brothers and sisters, and love will come. Thank you. <laughs>
Yeah. You know, there wasn't too much. Yeah. There wasn't too much. Yeah. Um, but are we ready to I've never been. All right. It's pretty good. CBS is a leader. House was there. Actually, it's just a lot. But when I saw this, it was good. So we're moving down that way. Yeah. 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 All right, we're stretching it that we're way. We're stretching it this way. This way? Yeah, that way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>